Hello, my name is Dylan. In this video, I'm going to take you through the steps that I took to build my first gaming PC. At first, the challenge seemed daunting. However, as I went through the various stages, I realised it was a really fun experience. These are the components required to build a PC, including a computer case, CPU, fan, RAM, motherboard, GPU, graphics processing unit, SSD, solid state drive, and HDD, hard disk drive. And here are the specific ones that I selected to build my gaming PC, including an i7 Intel Core CPU, um, Cooler Master fan, uh, which is a water cooler, 8 gigabytes of RAM, ASUS Prime motherboard, a GeForce GPU, 256 gigabytes of solid state drive, and 2 terabyte in hard disk drive. Let's start with the main components of the computer, the motherboard. These are the main components of the motherboard. As intimidating as it looks, I will simplify it into its main features and components. This is the motherboard. Getting familiar with the components is really important. The red circles show the screws on the motherboard to allow the motherboard to be attached to the computer case. This is where the CPU goes. The CPU, the central processing unit, is the brain of the computer. It carries out the instructions of a computer program by performing certain operations. For example, arithmetic, logic, controlling, etc. specified by the instructions. This is the RAM slot, which is where you insert your RAM card. RAM, random access memory, provides temporary memory of a computer program for the CPU. This is the GPU slot. GPU, graphics processing unit, is a logic chip which delivers images and videos to the computer screen. The 24 pin power connector, as shown, connects to a power cord from the power supply to provide power for the motherboard. The 8-pin power connector, as shown, connects external components to the motherboard, for example, LED lights of the PC or fans. The frontal audio connection connects the motherboard to auxiliary ports on the computer case. The, this is the frontal connections panel, which connects the USB ports to the motherboard. The main board separate power connector provides a motherboard with additional power from the power supply as motherboards and CPUs have become so powerful. Finally, these are the rear connections which will be placed at the back of the computer, which include USB ports, LAN ports, etc. This is the computer case. Remove the slide panels on my on my case, there are four screws which I needed to undo. Next, obtain the backplate from the motherboard and attach to the back of the computer case as shown. The backplate protects the rear connections of the motherboard. These circles represent where the motherboard will finally be attached to the case. We will come on to this later but it's worth to be aware of these at this early stage. Now we are going to attach the components to the motherboard. This is the SSD, the solid state drive. Attach the SSD to the SSD port. For my computer, I needed to attach the SSD at a 45 degree angle to the board. To secure it in place, uh, uh, use the clip at the end at the other end of the motherboard. When attaching the CPU, open the CPU flap using the thin handle and place the CPU inside. 
close the flap and clip the thin hand in place to secure it. The pins of the CPU are very fragile, so it's important to handle it with care. Insert the RAM cards in the RAM slots as shown. I had to apply some force on the card to secure it in place and to make sure it is connected properly to the motherboard. Now it's time to fit the motherboard into the case. I had to rotate the motherboard until the screw holes aligned with the computer's case screw holes and the rear connections fit on the back plate of the computer case. Inside the case you will find lots of wires. This is the power connector which needs to be fitted into the power socket of the motherboard. The power connector in the highlighted area connects the motherboard to the power button. Here is the connector for the audio cable which connects the motherboard to the auxiliary ports. In my case, I had some LED lights for visual effect. Here are the connectors as well as the connector to the fan. These all need to be connected to the 8 pin power connector as shown in the highlighted area. If you have a water cooler, you will need to remove the fan that came with the case. The circles highlighted here are where I needed to unscrew the fan. Here's a picture of my water cooler. The first step is to attach the fan to the case as shown. The next stage is to attach the water cooler to the CPU. Start with attaching the back plate to the back of the motherboard as shown using the clips provided. Next, place the screws in the highlighted areas on the back plate. Here I am attaching the CPU to the water cooler. First I applied a thermal paste uh, which came with the water cooler on the CPU in a zigzag layout to provide a conduction service to the water cooling system. Then I screwed the water cooler to the CPU in the highlighted areas and held it in position for 40 seconds. This is how it should look after screwing the water cooler to the motherboard. Next, I attached the motherboard to the computer case using the screws in the highlighted areas. Now onto the power supply. These are the main power cords that I needed to be plugged into the motherboard. This is the motherboard power cord, which applies power to the motherboard. This is the GPU power cord, which supplies power to the GPU if it requires it as GPUs have become so powerful. Finally, there is a separate power cord for the motherboard, which provides additional power. To fit the power supply into the case, I had to open the back plate and place it into the opening as shown in the highlighted area. Now it's time to connect the power supply to the motherboard. You may remember I mentioned earlier uh, on my motherboard there are two separate power cords. Here I am attaching the main power cord through the slot near the bottom of the computer case to the 20 fill pin slot on the motherboard. Next, following the same route, I had to attach the separate power cord to the separate power connector on the motherboard. Finally, it was time to install the hard disk drive. When placing the HDD, I had to attach it to a tray which came with the computer case as shown on the figure and install it in the highlighted area. So that's it. The computer is now ready to turn on and install an operating system of your choice. I really hope this video of the steps I took to build my computer has inspired you to build your own. Having gone through the process, it is not as daunting as I first thought it would be.